Hi friends welcome to my YouTube channel I am here with an interesting video top 10 not so nice facts about Canada. Number 1 is residential school system perhaps one of the darkest periods of Canadian history was during the adoption of the residential school system within Canada. Approximately 150,000 Aboriginal Canadian children were uprooted from their homes and forced into English schools where they lived until the completion of their education. It was nothing more than an attempt to aggressively assimilate the native population into the European based Canadian majority. Centuries old languages, cultures, names, and traditions were lost, and abuse was rampant as well as malnutrition. Number 2 was the FLQ crisis Canada is likely the last place you'd expect to be under martial law because of homegrown Canadian terrorists. Well, it did happen. In the French-speaking province of Quebec in 1970, local politician Pierre Laporte and British diplomat James Cross were kidnapped by the French-speaking separatist group Front de Liberation du Quebec, FLQ. Later, Laporte was found dead stuffed in the trunk of a car, and Cross was released through negotiation. Hundreds of people were arrested and detained without trial as the military took control with sweeping powers primarily in the city of Montreal. Human rights were greatly diminished as troops raided buildings and patrolled the streets. Number 3 is the seal hunt as nice as Canada is known to be, the seal hunt is likely the best known controversy on this list. The roots of the hunt can be traced to the first European settlements. Seal oil was in high demand as a lubricant, and of course, seals were wanted for their fur. Hundreds of thousands have been killed throughout the centuries to meet this demand. Eight since the official ban on seal imports by the EU and Russia, the demand for seal products has plummeted. Despite this, Canada has the highest seal hunting quota in the world, which has drawn international condemnation. Number 4 is Louis Real. Louis Real was a Canadian politician who is today considered the founder of the province of Manitoba. The land was previously owned by the Hudson's Bay Company, which sold it to the Government of Canada in 1869. The mostly Metis, people of Aboriginal and European descent, were increasingly feeling marginalized and looked to Louis Real, who was Metis himself, to represent them as their leader when he negotiated Manitoba's entry into Canada. 7. Based on the success in Manitoba, Metis leaders in the province of Saskatchewan later called upon Real to represent them as well. Instead of negotiating with the government in this case, Real organized the military resistance which led to conflict. Number 5 is Bill 101 French and English are the official languages of Canada. Approximately 22% of the total population speaks French, 58.4% speaks English. The majority of the French population lives in the province of Quebec, making it a predominantly French-speaking region. In 1977, a law was passed in Quebec to recognize French as its official provincial language. The law is commonly referred to as Bill 101, and it enforces the promotion of French within Quebec. The enforcement of the bill is very controversial. Number 6 is Japanese internment camps after the attack on Pearl Harbor by the Japanese. The Canadian government rounded up approximately 22,000 Canadian citizens of Japanese lineage and forcibly moved them from their homes to internment camps in British Columbia. These citizens had their property confiscated and remained in the camps until four years after the war ended. Number 7 is Medicare Wait. Canadian Health Care. Universal. Government-funded health care has been a source of pride for Canadians since its inception in the early 1960s. It's a social service accessible and free for all Canadian citizens. So where is the controversy or dark history here? Well, the system is very controversial as Canada has been consistently ranked among the worst in the first world in terms of wait times for surgeries and specialists. Furthermore, if you have deeper pockets and are willing to pay for a specialist, you can't in Canada. This leaves some critically ill, time-sensitive patients with little choice but to wait a very long time for service or leave the country for care elsewhere. Number 8 is the Belthuk. The Belthuk are a now extinct indigenous tribe that was based on the island of Newfoundland. Unlike most North American native peoples, the Belthuk had no desire to interact with the Europeans and tried to avoid contact as much as possible. As the Europeans settled primarily along the coastline of the island, 
the Bithuk began to move further inland. Eventually, as the number of settlers increased, so did the demand for natural resources. Three the technologically superior and better armed Europeans took the regions rich in resources, which pushed the Bithuk into regions away from the coastal resources that were vital to their diet and well-being. Starvation inevitably followed as well as the rampant spread of European diseases and increased hostility. Number 9 is asbestos exportation at one time. Canada was one of the largest exporters of asbestos in the world. The majority of this went to third world countries that had neither the equipment nor the education to safely handle the carcinogenic mineral. Although 58 countries have already banned asbestos, Canada has not yet done so. However, it is expected to implement a ban by 2018. The country's last asbestos mine closed its doors for good in 2012. Number 10 is the Akatian expulsion in the 18th century. The province of Nova Scotia was colonized by British and French immigrants. After several conflicts, most of the territory came under British control. Once that happened, the property of the French immigrants was targeted and the people were expelled from the province. One homes and crops were burned, and livestock was seized. Approximately 1,100 Acadians, Canadians of French descent who immigrated to the east coast of Canada, lost everything as they were forced off their land and deported by the British Navy to colonies in South Carolina, Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Louisiana.